Hey, welcome back to our podcast, your go-to source for all things real estate and lifestyle in the heart of Fort Worth, Texas. I'm Jackson Christian Mary. And I'm Jean Christian Mary. <laughs> and together we're here to guide you through the vibrant world of Fort Worth and surrounding suburb living. We believe in creating a community where everyone feels at home. And that's why we're committed to bringing you honest, expert advice in a fun and friendly way. From the bustling streets of downtown to the serene suburbs, we've got the scoop on what makes each area unique. Each week we'll dive into the latest market trends, offer tips for both buyers and sellers, and share insider knowledge to help you make informed decisions. So whether you're a first time home buyer, a seasoned investor, or just curious about some of the Fort Worth charming neighborhoods, you're in the right place. Let's jump into today's episode. Well, howdy, y'all, and welcome back to Welcome Home, Fort Worth. Fort Worth. <laughs> I'm Here so we glad are. that you have joined us for this week's episode. Uh, this is shaping up to be one of my favorite things that we're doing on our podcast, and that is our market update. And so today we've got the market update for the month of December. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we got some data that we're really excited to share with y'all. Uh, specifically, I'll just I'll just highlight it and tease it. There's some really amazing things that are happening with mortgage rates. Yes. There's some thank really, goodness. thank goodness, praise Woo. God, like it is awesome what is happening there. So we're, that's going to be later in the show. Uh, but for now, um, we're going to kind of do a couple different things today. A couple of disclaimers before we jump in with to the data. Um, first off, because of the holidays, we're filming this a week earlier than we usually would. And so that has affected our numbers a little bit. And so we'll get into that at, you know, point by point. It's still good data and it's still giving us a great indication for what's happening in the month of December. However, just keep that in mind. As we compare it to the previous month, November, it's going to look a little different. So that's the first thing. Second thing, do you want to make the Tarrant County note? So we pulled for most of this statistical data, we pulled from different areas, Tarrant County, Johnson, a um, little bit of Ellis. So it's kind of a, a hodgepodge of mm-hmm. grouping and so this data, just, just remember, we always tell you this disclaimer, this data is really for that group. And mm-hmm. if you want more specific data pool, we need to make sure we know what that would be, like yeah. the area. This is getting you closer than yeah. national. So yeah. like what you see on, on the news network you watch, this is going to get you a lot closer than that is yeah. for what's happening in our area. Right. However, keep in mind, real estate, especially in this season right now, is still so case by case basis. And so just keep in mind as we look at this. Right. Um, you know, we're talking about uh, four days on market is what posted, I'm sorry, four days on market, excuse me. For example, uh, f- we had four months of supply post in the month of November. However, if you look at Tarrant County specifically, it really is closer to that three. Yeah, we're um, right month. around three. So um, there's just things like that that are skewed a little bit because we're kind of combining two counties. Um, and then we've also got a little bit of some other counties. But so keep that in mind um, as we do this. And then is there something else I'm forgetting you can think of? Uh, so let's see. That's, I, that's our main. Okay, yeah. cool. And we'll go through it as we get there. Yeah, we'll get there. Yeah. All right. Well, today we're doing our little bit different format. So in, this is a disclaimer. Ha, this is what it is. Uh, real estate is is the same thing. If you ever took an account, oh my gosh, I can't say the word now. Economics. Economics class. I want to say economic. Anyways. Uh, real estate's the same way with economics. Um, it is supply and demand. That is what our business and, and what your experience as a buyer or your experience as a seller is going to be dictated by. That's just the way it's going to work. And so today I've kind of structured our market update in more of that supply and demand kind of format. And so we can look at supply indicators of what's going on with what's what's on the market or what's coming on the market or any that kind of stuff. And then demand. So what's affecting buyer interest rates or for an example of that um, affordability, what's going on there. Um, and I've even got an update for us regarding um, unemployment rates and what's going on with Fort Worth unemployment. And so um, all of those things affect buyer ability to uh, buy houses. Absolutely. So, so just as a, a little primer, when supply is high oh gosh, and demand is low, uh-huh. then we're going to have houses sitting on the market more mm-hmm. yep. and prices begin to slowly drop. Yep. If we have low supply, uh-huh. low inventory and uh-huh. high demand, yep. they're going to be selling like hotcakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So that's what we're working with here. Okay. Ready? Ready. Let's do this. Jump on in. (laughs) All right. Well, jump in with supply info. So we're going to start with supply. So um, this is more of that seller side. So these are the kind of the sellers and and what uh, listings are on the market. So um, number of new listings that have posted so far in the month of December is 1,097. Um, And that is uh, November was 2,206. So again, just reminder, that is just that difference of of us doing this about a week earlier than we usually would. So, um, And and off of our prime time, which had been in, you know, May and June, in June, we had 3,285. So So it gives you a sense of that. We're down uh, probably anyways. Mm -hmm. However, um, keep in mind uh, that seasonality. We mentioned that in in last last month's um, 
update, but people just don't sell as much during the holiday season, during the winter seasons. So um, 1,097 listings have come on the market in December. If we look at the total amount of active listings, so this is everything that is on the market right now that you as a buyer in, in the uh, Fort Worth and, and Tarrant and Johnson and a little bit Ellis, a little bit Parker uh, could actually purchase 5,638 right now. Mm -hmm. And that is down from 5,792 listings in the month of November. So it's down about 100, uh, 130 um, listings. And it's down from like our lowest point in 2023. Mm -hmm. So our lowest number of list listings that were active was 4,192, 4,192 yep. in April. Yeah. So what we usually see is that, that we start having less and less and less listings for like the next two months mm -hmm. usually, and then it starts climbing yep. again. So good things to be aware of as somebody who may be thinking about what's going on with my home values or something, what's going on with um, home prices or things like that. Right. So uh, the amount of sales so far that I've posted in the month of December is 875 sales, okay? So closings that have happened. 875 homes have come off the market that were previously on the market, right? Mm -hmm. um, in the month of November, we we finalized November at 1,509. So we're still lower than that for sure. Um, we do have, I'll mention this later on the podcast, we've got about just shy of a thousand pendings currently. Pendings are what we look look at as we look forward in the next month. They're kind of a prediction indicator. Mm -hmm. And so as we see pendings, we could say some of those are going to close next week. Some of those are going to close a week and a half from now. So kind of still in December. Um, but a lot of those will close in January, maybe even February. That'd be a longer closing. Because it usually takes about 30 days to yeah, once you're in a close the property. Once you go yeah, once it goes pending, you're at least probably three weeks is mm, what probably. you should be for yeah, most something. for the average transaction. Mm -hmm. So um, so good things to know for sure. Um, this brings us to what you have probably heard on the news cycles, um, which is this, this metric of months of supply. Okay, so months of supply is how many, like, you know, if we have three months of supply, that just simply means that in three months, we could completely clear the shelves of all the homes on the market in the Fort Worth, Tarrant, Johnson County area. So yep. if nothing else came on the market, yep. they would, we, they'd be gone. We cleared out in three months. So that's historically pretty low. Yeah. Um, that's historically pretty low. Six months is usually more of that average kind of thing, depending on where demand is at and depending on what's going on there. Six months is usually that number. And so um, we went ahead, uh, uh, the metrics, if you pull it right now, are kind of funky with our systems that we pull the numbers from. So we went ahead and hand calculated it because we do math here at the Christian Mary Group. <laughs> <laughs> and we do math well, uh, or math good, excuse me. Math good. <laughs> yeah, we do math do good. Do good math. Yep. Um, so uh, to calculate the supply, basically what you end up doing, I'm, I'm, I'll save you the details. I'm glad to explain this if you want. But what it gets us to is about a 15% absorption rate. Um, which is kind of uh, very similar to the idea of, uh, of uh, months of supply. And so we are currently tracking at about 15.5% for our absorption rate. Anything 15% or below is a buyer's market. Mm -hmm. So that's where buyers tend to have a little more of the power in the game. They tend to be able to do a little more negotiating. They have more negotiating power in what's going on. Uh, when you get to that 20% or more, that's when it's a seller's market, which is what we've seen I mean, a lot recently. A lot. A lot. Well, and, you know, like in the spring and summer, we were at two months supply mm -hmm. of inventory yes. for a lot of areas, even less than that. Yeah. So that was super seller's market. Yeah. And that, I mean, that we're talking, that was, uh, gosh, what, 12 days on market yeah. average, even sometimes in the single digits, right. which is insane. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then it slowed down. A lot of that probably due to interest rates. Yes. Yeah. and Which was the Fed's goal. And buyer, yep. just an affordability. Yep. So, and yeah, and now now with the interest rates starting to drop, we're seeing mortgage mortgage apps starting to prove. Too. Yeah, and that's what's coming up next. So, so if we're looking at our average closing price in the month of December, we're currently at in the whole area average close price 400,047 uh 100 oh, I always I suck it. I always want to say 447700 because that's how I just think <laughs> about numbers now. 400,047 and 700. So that in there you go. Um so this is uh, an increase because that has gone up since the month of November, which was 430,894, okay? So that is a big increase, about $17,000 increase in the average close price. So good news there. Um, for yeah, it, it matches actually August numbers just about. Yeah, sure does. So we're back at the kind of summertime kind of number for sales price. Yep. So as we get into that, that's kind of the bulk of what you need to know as somebody, as we, as we analyze the supply side, that's the bulk of it for sure. 
Now, if we're talking about that buyer side, let's take that average close price, right? If we if we threw that into a good solid, you know, mortgage uh, rate calculation, right? Um, for what your monthly might look like, four hundred and forty-seven thousand seven hundred dollars uh, as your mortgage amount at today's interest rate, six point six five. Big exciting news there. That's down like just a two what. Three weeks ago it was eight. Like, yeah. I mean, we're, it's just nuts. Yeah, it's a huge change. So, so big news there. Now, your monthly on a thirty-year mortgage is going to be close to about two thousand eight hundred and seventy-four dollars. Now, keep in mind that does not include taxes, does not include insurance, right? So, that can be more in your actual monthly payment, depending on if you're paying your taxes through your escrow or not. Um, so, I say that because check out what the average rental amount is. And this is a big indicator for our buyers and what we what we hear a lot from people right we now. We do, we do. Um, your average rental rate in this area is 2,662, right? So there's a, basically a $200 difference without taxes and without insurance, right? right? So this is one of the first things we analyze when we look at demand for buyers because what we're seeing is it's cheaper to rent right now. It's cheaper to rent. Now, if you talk appreciation, if right. you talk of investment, what the investment of real estate, we see it at a minimum 4% appreciation, right? That's probably going to get you close to about that 10,000 a year extra. So it makes up a lot of that for sure. But as a homeowner, you take on more costs. You're going to be dealing with repairing. You might be bringing, updating it, right? Adding floors, adding uh, countertops, maybe right. whatever you're thinking, or you may have to repair things. You might have an AC unit that goes out. So there are other costs that come up along the way. Um, that go into that. So the way I like to think about it is, you know, with a mortgage where you're putting in twenty twenty eight hundred dollars basically in your mortgage, it's like you're you're putting that money into a savings account. Every yes, month. that's great. Yep. And if you were the kind of renter yep. that you know you had cheaper rent, but you were still choosing to put a big chunk into savings every single month, mm -hmm. well, then that could match your investment if you invested it in something. Yeah, absolutely. But very few people do that. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, e even high yield savings account, they won't get you close to 4%. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they're still way below that. So, and that's, again, that's that's on the lower end mm -hmm. of appreciation that we see. I mean, that's the lower end of the average appreciation that we see. Yeah. So. Hey, everyone. Real quick before we get back to the show. If you're on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube, we'd love to connect with you. We post a lot of content like this in case you miss an episode, along with more Fort Worth and surrounding suburb, local insights and finds. You can find our team at the Christenberry Group on all social platforms, or you can connect with Jackson and I personally on our Facebook and our Instagram accounts. Just be prepared for lots of pictures of my grandson on either account. Now back to the show. So first off, we analyze rents versus kind of the, the monthly payment. It's still a little cheaper to rent right now. So, so that's something that we're aware of on, on, the, on the demand side. What's the demand for a single family home uh, to, to purchase it in this area? Um, the other thing we, we analyze is mortgage demand. So the amount of people actually going to purchase uh, a, a home, the amount of people putting in mortgage applications. Right. So this is great data to track um, because when you see mortgage applications on the rise, that's usually indicating that people are spiking. People, buyers are jumping into the market. They're, they're ready. They're ready. They want to go buy a house. And so we, that's what we've seen. They're feeling hopeful yes, again. As they should. Six, we had this huge drop in, in interest rates. So that, that's that's a great, great news. You know, so, and, we, and we sometimes don't talk about how much buyer confidence plays into the market. Yeah, and that's a statistic we should probably pull on the next one because yeah. there is that whole consumer confidence index yeah. that talks about those kinds of numbers. And they're getting confident yeah. again. Yeah, and, and what's interesting is, and one of the reasons why we started this podcast is because we wanted to help people understand what's actually happening because there has been a lot of misinformation. There's been a lot of scare tactics put in the real estate game. People who own homes have been fearful, are my values going to be okay? And, and so one of the reasons we wanted to start this was so people could understand, hey, they're safe, or if they're not safe, here's what here's 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 the way out. What you can uh, if, do. If you need, yeah, here are your options. You are not stuck in that fear mode where they where, where news outlets want you to be so you keep consuming their news uh, content. So anyways, jumping back into mortgage demand. Um, this is great, great metric. We have seen a 3.53% week over week. So since last week, mm -hmm. increase in people applying for mortgages, yep. uh, which is just, again, like, so good. It's going the right direction. It's going the right direction. Yeah. Um, and we have not always seen that all year. I mean, this is down, like this number, the, the amount of people applying for mortgages right now compared to last year, mm -hmm. it's down 18%. Yeah. So, um, but we are seeing it track upward. Looks like our lowest probably hits somewhere closest to this year that we've seen. 
Uh, mortgage applications spiked, um, gosh, in Jan looks like January, maybe February. Um, and we had a, a big bump in, in there. It's been pretty average since. We dropped in the month of October and now we're on the rise again. So, okay. yep. But again, the big news, well, six. Thing to consider yeah. for that is with um, mortgage apps increasing mm -hmm. and interest rate decreasing, and we still have low inventory, mm -hmm. that it's going to be a pretty fiery market next yes. year. Yeah. And that's, that's I mean, y'all, that's really what we're, uh, we'll talk, we'll, let's get into that in just a second. Let's get, just there a second. There, there's your teaser. Yeah, well, just because we have a big, like, <laughs> there's a big, uh, we as real estate professionals, like, have a duty to tell you some information regarding this coming year's market that you need to know. Your public service. Yeah, I mean, it really needs to be considered that. Uh -huh. But before we do that, just while we finish analyzing demand, um, the unemployment rate in our area is at 3.6%. That was in the month of October. We're about two uh, months behind on this data. Um, and so that is down from September, which was 3.9%. Um, so we're down 3.6%. So that's a good indication that more people have the access to funds through their salary jobs or through their employment uh, to be able to actually purchase a home. Mm -hmm. Okay. Helps with affordability. Yep. So, sorry, I just want to make sure we, we finish demand. Let's talk about this because this is a great point to get into. Like, we are seeing really great indicators for what's coming in 2024. We are. Yeah. And it, if I was a buyer in, in this market, I'd be scared. Not And not because I, I don't know what to do, okay, because we got your back. Don't worry about that. I would be saying, I need to get a house before summer. Yeah. And, and I'm not trying to be real estate agent, so let me say you something. I'm not trying to make money in, in saying this. The only thing that quelled the crazy markets we saw in 21 and 22 was interest rates, y'all. Mm -hmm. Like you see a direct correlation from mortgage apps, all of it, as interest rates went up, the, the market quelled and the market said, I'm gonna sit back and wait, okay? So we know that there's this pent up demand. Right. And the only thing that unlocks that is interest rates coming down, which they just did. The Fed in their meeting and what they announced, they talked about three rate cuts in the in the year of 2024, y'all. Mm -hmm. So so this is like, yeah. it, we don't know when they're gonna happen, right? So we right. don't have indications of that. Right. Um, maybe we get that, they meet again in February, so maybe we get that then. But like, y'all, it is tracking all, all the right signs. It, I hope just for the sake of buyers uh, that it is not, as unhealthy of a market as it was in 21 and 22. Yeah. Yeah. We don't, we don't, we don't think it's going to be that yeah. crazy because we had the COVID factor yes. in that, but yeah, but it is. And, and you were at three, I mean, you were at 2.75. Well, it was a different percent rates for yeah. some people. So. And we don't expect those kind of numbers. Yeah. We're really not expecting that, but we are expecting better numbers and it is pent up demand again. Mm -hmm. And there's low inventory. So I guess what I would say to that is if you are a buyer and you don't have a house to sell, mm -hmm. because if you have a house to sell, then it also is to your advantage then when the market gets hot because mm -hmm. you'll make more on your sale. Yep. So if you're planning to sell and buy, you're going to be about in the same, you know, same place either way. But if you're planning, this is your first time home or you're planning to buy and you don't have to sell, then earlier is going to be definitely better than later. Yeah. I mean, so much better. Yep. So don't wait, 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 wait. If you're really planning to do this next year, think about how to speed that along a bit. Yeah, because it's going to save you money. It will. Because it's going to yeah. save you having to pay out of pocket, uh, having to compete in multiple offers, things like that, um, before the demand really gets here. Um, and it's unleashed by lower interest rates. So uh, that's a public service announcement. That's to right. Be, to be aware of. So first quarter yeah. at the latest, probably May, June. Yeah. If you can get going with your house search, if that's what you're going to do, right? right? And you want to be sold May, June, right? So you want to be on the market uh, 30 to 60 days before that. Is yeah. what you want. I would yeah. assume, right? Yeah, be looking. Yeah. 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 Find your place. Yeah. Yep. Get pre-qualified. Yep. Do the whole thing. Yep. So, well, if you are in this current market right now, if, if you were in the market in the month of December or even January, some of these things will carry over a little bit. What we see is that days on market is average about 56, which is pretty standard for what we've seen the last couple of months. Um, and so that's something to know, you know, if, as a seller, if I'm somebody selling my house and I see my, my days on market getting close to 56, I know that I'm probably overpriced a little bit, or there's something wrong with my home that I need to that I need to repair because the market is not responding appropriately to the house in the way that it should be. Um, depending on your neighborhood, depending on your neighborhood, obviously this is all local. Like you need to check your local. Like if if you asked us, hey, like 
we might re we might not say the 56 number for your specific neighborhood. But on average, like if you're just somebody out and about walking around, not doing, you know, deep dives into each neighborhood like we do, this is what the number that to be aware of. And so as a buyer though, if I'm looking for a deal, I'm going to go look for something that's closer to that 60 days on market Absolutely. number. That's over this this average because I'm going to find some sellers that aren't that are that have sat for long enough where they might consider um, some kind of offer, right? Yeah. That, that that might be slightly below list. I, you know, if you're looking at average, um, you know, uh, close price to list price, yeah. it's still ninety six point five percent, right? So I mean, that's not so. That's not you're not getting. We're not talking like bottom. Yeah, low, you're not low getting twenty k off list, right? Um, you, or, or maybe at least in, not in the average price range. In luxury, you might because that's that's different uh, percentages at that point. Um, but you you might you might not have to pay list depending on the demand for this property. So yeah, it's a good time to either get some concessions mm -hmm. or not pay quite as much. Um, it's not going to be crazy, but you, four percent four percent can be a lot when you're buying a three hundred thousand dollars house. It's twelve thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So that could be something for you. Yep. And you're not having to compete, mm -hmm. which is a big plus. So yep. That's not pushing the price up. Yep. And you have a little bit of a moment to make a decision. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not in such a hurry. You know the and then we're competing. There's so much, you know, frenzy yeah. related to that market. Yeah, and you just have more negotiating power. Yes, you do. You know, for the house that's, you know, eight offers. I mean, you're, yeah. you know, they have the power. Right. They have the power. They're the they're the hot commodity that you want, right? Um, <clears throat> within reason, obviously, you want to do. You need to you negotiate what you need as the buyer. You need to be good. You know, uh, you need to do what you need to do for your family, for your 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 current situation. Um, however, like. Yeah, it's 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 just good good info to be aware of yeah. as as yeah. as what this might feel like in this market right now. Exactly. So there is not. I mentioned this earlier. Nine hundred ninety eight pending in the month of December. That is up. Fun fact. Um, since the month of November, mm -hmm. three hundred thirty four is how much we saw pending in the month of November. So we've tripled basically the amount of pending. So November was a good month is what yeah. that indicates yeah. um, for, for getting a contract for, for buyers in the market. And, you know, that's what's fun to, that's what's fun to remind people. You know, everybody's like, is anything going to sell in November or December? Mm -hmm. It's like, yes, we totally. tend, we do tend to have a spike. Yep. You know, a lot of, a lot of properties do sell in those time of year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it, and it, anything can sell. Mm -hmm. It's just, we got to be real attentive to what the market is telling us regarding this product that we have added into the midst of, of this buying environment. Yeah. So. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, uh, what I wanted to end with today, um, cause we've got our last statistic, unless you want to jump anything else. Um, I wanted to end with, and we're going to do this every week, just so you know, because this is what you need to know. And this is why we're, I'm in real estate. I think you're the same way. Mm -hmm. Um, real estate as a one or two year, you know, as we analyze these month to month, you know, we can see big swings. We can see bumps that go high and drop low. It can be fearful as we talk about, you know, the, the month of August being higher than the month of December, right? You're like, oh my gosh, my values, are they going to come back up? They will. Um, if you look over 10 years, let's just talk about like yeah. in 2013, y'all, what the average close price in our area that we analyze was $198,088. Okay. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> that's 10 years ago. 10 years ago. Okay. It was average sales price. Do you right? want to know what it is today? I've already said it, by the way, because it was it was the average four hundred and thirty three thousand eighteen dollars. Okay, yeah. so we have appreciated. Oh goodness gracious! I mean, we're talking uh, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars if you owned your house mm -hmm. over that time period. Um, you have for sure been paying your monthly. You have for sure there are costs right. associated with owning a house. So I want to be clear about that. But as a general rule of thumb, real estate is a great long term investment. Um, we do see dips. There are yeah. times when real estate drops. That is just average and just very natural. Um, but uh, overall, it tracks the, the 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 what do you call it? The line graph goes up. Right. The trend is upwards. Yeah. So it tends to be about timing. Mm -hmm. um, are you going to be in your home for more than a year, mm -hmm. or did you just happen to buy? in 2020 before 2021 mm -hmm. came along with 18% appreciation. Yep. Was it a luck of the draw? Mm -hmm. But if you're not planning on the luck of the draw, which most of us don't live that way, yeah. then as long as you're just in your home for a decent amount of time, mm -hmm. you're going to make money on that property. Yeah, at least, I mean, you, you want to be in, if you're buying a home, try to at least, at the very least, be in your home for at least two years. Um, just, you know, pay cap gains when you go yeah. sell it. Um, that, that just on your taxes, that, that'll just cause you some problems, but, um, or at least make you pay more than you might if you did just waited that extra six months to, right. um, to, to do that. But 
yeah, besides that, I mean, real estate, y'all, is just a great investment. It's why we love telling people about this these kind of data is because like we want you in a house, um, not because it makes us money, not because of any of these other reasons, because it is one of the greatest wealth building tools for families, for, for people who want to change the lives of their grandchildren, of their great-grandchildren. Right. It's one of the greatest wealth building assets that and tools that we have for uh, in, in America. <laughs> it's just huge. It is. <laughs> it is. This is why we have a, a really large middle class mm -hmm. because people are able to buy homes yep. and develop wealth. Yep. Yeah. So celebrate that. If you are a homeowner, homeowner, and if you're not a homeowner, but you want to be a homeowner, give us a call. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah please. <laughs> Let us know. We'd be glad to help. <laughs> be, gl be glad to help you become a homeowner and develop some wealth. <laughs> yes. Be glad to do that. So um, that's our market update for the month of December. Anything, any closing thoughts before we uh, sign Just, off? Um, if, you're cool not, like if, if you're not already investing in real estate, you know, this is a great year to do that. 2024 mm -hmm. is a great year to do that. Uh, we do expect a lot of appreciation coming down the pike over the next few years. So um, if you have questions about that or, you know, just don't know how to do all that, we would love to have coffee or meet with you. And, yeah, you and know, just talk you through your options. Just talk you through the options. Yeah, advise you. That's all we want to do. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Help you out. All right, y'all. Well, we sure do appreciate you joining us this week for Welcome Home Fort Worth. Yeah. We'll see you back next week. See you next time. Hey, thank you so much for watching the podcast today. If this has been valuable for you at all, we sure could use your help getting the word out to more people. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, go ahead and give us a follow and consider taking just maybe two minutes um, to leave us a review. Both do wonders for our show with the algorithm and on both platforms, all you gotta do, head over to our show page on Spotify, hit three dots and select rate. And on Apple, all you gotta do is just scroll down to the show and say, leave a review. So you just click that. If you're seeing this on Facebook or Instagram, a like or comment puts all the good vibes out in the algorithm for us. And on YouTube, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be notified whenever we post a new episode. Join us again next week for more Fort Worth housing news and updates. Until then, y'all have a great week.